chapter 3 from the book of Revelation. The Revelation of Jesus Christ. Chapter 3. Chapter 3. And verse 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens, and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens. I know your work, see, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it. For you have little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Indeed I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say that they are Jews, and are not, but lie. Indeed I will make them come and worship before your feet, and to know that I have loved you. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world, to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and you shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write on him my new name. He has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen. Behold, I am coming quickly. Christ Jesus calls out, and he points out, this generation will not pass away until all these things happen. And with this issue, my beloved brethren, the issue of the later days, everyone has dealt with, many people, even false teachers and false prophets, like Nost Nostradamus was, and all people, and all religions, have dealt with this issue. But, as my beloved brethren, all these people, and many times those who are moved by the spirits, evil spirits, want to have their own opinion about this issue. If we need and we want the wisdom of God, we want to have an opinion about this issue according to the gospel of Jesus Christ, though, according to the word of God. And of course, today, our lesson isn't. And the message from God isn't, I believe, the sign of the times. It's till that time, what is about to happen? What is the reason of things? What is the solution of things? And how man of God wants and must walk according to the gospel of Jesus Christ with one hope with his, which is safe and sure. A hope which gives us safety for our future. And a hope which assures our life for the blessings in which God has prepared for our future. Whether we want it or not, of course, we are living in times which are strange. All started then, there, when, according to the Word of God, according to the Scriptures, the Jews decided to crucify Jesus Christ the Lord. And they decided to crucify Him because they were waiting for another Messiah who would free them from the Romans. But they were waiting for something else, and something else came. A Messiah came who, in reality, freed them, would free them from the true oppressor, who is devil and Satan, and they crucified him. They didn't understand. Of course, the people did not crucify him, the devil crucified him through his desire to stop the work of God. He crucified the Son of the living God, the Word of God, which became flesh, striving until the end because he came yes like a god but also as a man and he walked and worked on earth like a man jesus christ and satan put him to death but out of the laws of god and the laws of god was and is the wage of sin is death and this man jesus christ did not sin and there the devil was overcome because he did something which wasn't permitted and the righteous of God resurrected Jesus. But people, because people are used by Christ and people are used by the enemy also. People who crucified him said, may his blood be upon us and our children. And so, by the Lord was created a great parenthesis which was cut off 
the cooperation of God was cut off for the people of Israel in that day. And the people of Israel was destroyed 70 AD and judgment came upon these people. In other words, the blood of Jesus Christ, the righteous fell upon them, the people of Israel there. And the parenthesis closed with the Holocaust when the fulfillment of time came, where the blood of Jesus Christ fell upon their children also. In the Second World War, and from then on, my beloved brethren, the plan of God starts. All the signs of the Word of God have become a reality. Earthquakes, floods, dryness, droughts, sicknesses, poverty, famine, everything increases. But someone might say that these things always happen, but there are other signs which never ever happened. And they are happening now for the first time. Jerusalem, the much talked about city. The cup of trembling. That's what God said. Not only a cup of trembling, but also a stone that burdens all the nations which has to do with her. From 48 and afterwards, when the nation of Jerusalem was created, it was the first sign of the end. The later days, from then on, Jerusalem became the center of wounds of all humanity. With a great sign that will be trampled on by all the nations until the times of the nations will be fulfilled, the rapture of the church. And it's the only city throughout all history which is conquered by many nations. And no one can free her from many religions. And no one can free her. But at the same time, with Jerusalem, which walks on her road, now, Another rebirth happens in Europe. The Roman Empire. We see it again through the creation of the European Union. For the first time, after 2,000 years, Europe has one currency. For the first time, after 2,000 years, Europe has common borders. And this did not happen by conquering, by war. It happened with peace, according to the Word of God. In fulfillment of the signs in which Jesus Christ gave to all people. And in this generation, for 48 and after, who many of us were born before 1948, things were created in which people saw for the first time, other than Jerusalem and the borders, a traumatic explosion of knowledge. When I used to go to school, I used to write with chalk on a board. And now our children write on PC systems, which are renewed every six months, and even earlier now. And I, now that I'm 58 years old, if I'm not computer aware, I'm looked upon as someone who is illiterate. There goes experience by age now. Now, there is knowledge of people with evolution, progress, an explosion of knowledge. What can we say about journeys, aeroplanes, helicopters, spaceships, an explosion of knowledge. Knowledge, the Bible says, in the later days will be multiplied. It will not increase, it will multiply. But at the same time, bad times will flood throughout all humanity. Terrorism is a phenomenon completely in our generation and no one can stop it even though the great technology the great powers of this world has no one can stop terrorism violence adultery no one can stop this bad thing that is involving the outpouring of sin which starts from pederasty in any age help by even medical counsel and drugs. Unique period throughout all humanity, my beloved brethren. The living conditions of all people, very high, but in great danger also. The life of all men and women according to the word of God in our generation, 70 and the most 80. 
And if you think for a while, all the people that you know, you will see that 90% of them die from 70 to 80. Over 80, each one of us, if we think the people, about a few that we know that have lived over 80. Each one of us don't even know 10. This is after research and studies. There are of course accidents. People who die before 70. The complete balance of the number of men and women on the earth. After sicknesses, wars, different conditions. My beloved brethren, everything, everything Jesus Christ reigns over. Everything. All are under His almighty hand, whether we want it or not. The pollution of our atmosphere, unique in our times. Global warming. And someone could talk forever about the pollution of, of the atmosphere. On the earth, in the rivers, in the seas, in the air. But... Another great sign, my brethren, is hatred, the lack of love. People will be giving in to marriage, they will eat, drink, building, and only in our generation there is this traumatic increase in divorces. Where lately, you might know, a new law has come out in Europe, a new marriage type of marriage, which isn't a marriage after all, but two people go, a man and a woman, or a man and another man, or a woman and another woman, before a notary, and they declare, firstly, what they own, their possessions, and secondly, that they're about to live together, and thirdly, they say, if they ever separate, if one wants, they will separate before the notary, for the presence of the notary, they divide what they have with simplicity now man goes on in the outpouring of sin but and human relationships my beloved brethren are dissolved no one cares I remember when I lived in Marusi young all the neighborhood was one today one door from the other door the strangers and even enemies all the doors were open then now all the doors now are locked with iron bars everyone's frightened fear has covered everyone alarm systems every house has its own alarm system these are signs my brethren which do not lie should we talk about loneliness? Should we talk about psychological problems, drugs, medications, narcotics? Which people try to find joy taking narcotics and drugs. People try to find peace taking drugs and medication. People try to find enjoyment going to sin. Is man made for that reason, my brethren? Behold, I'm coming quickly, Christ calls out. Prepare to answer to your Lord and your God, whether we want it or not. One voice in the end will remain alive, the Word of God. Everything else will pass away. The earth, its fulfillment, the heavens all become new. New earth and new heavens. All will pass away, but the Word of God will remain forever and today. Let's put the Word of God in our hearts, but... And we must, we must continue with more signs of the great blessings of the later days. And on my men servants, and on my maid servants in those days, Lord cries out, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and I shall prophesy upon all flesh. And it continues, and whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And throughout all the world, a new church has been created without a leader. Because her leader is Christ. Hasn't got a teacher. Because her teacher is Christ. Hasn't got a master. Because her master is Christ. Hasn't got a chief or a leader. Just servants. 
hasn't got chiefs. It isn't governed by man's might, but by the Holy Spirit. It hasn't got guards to put order because the order of things is in the heart because God is a God of order and abides in men and women in which he reborns with his holy word and his holy spirit but and the last separation now there are no political systems communism has fallen capitalism has fallen all the systems have fallen all have been uprooted only one thing has remained, Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And the last separation is, I believe in Jesus Christ, I reject Jesus Christ. But I and my house will adore the Lord, the will of God says. We choose Jesus Christ and Him crucified and risen and among us. Because where there's two or three gathered in the name of Jesus Christ, there the Lord is there also. And I know with all assurance, and I believe it from the word of God, and I know it, and I see it in the name of Jesus, that Christ is in our midst right now. He lives and reigns full of glory. And His angels have surrounded us, and they guard the people of God, the glorious people of God. May His name, Jesus Christ's name, be full of glory. Hallelujah. My beloved brethren, but our subject, as I said in the beginning, isn't the sign of times. It is you and I. What are we waiting for? And what will we do? And now, this is the church of the latter days, the church of Philadelphia, in which Jesus Christ talks to, who has a key that opens and no one can close, and he has a key that closes and no one can open. And he says, I know your works. See, I have said before you an open door and no one can shut it. And this doesn't happen by chance. But if you want the Lord Christ to put a door before you open for everything and for you to walk in the presence of God, in the blessings of God, for you to enter into the holiest of holies, and no one to be able to stop you. For you to kneel and call upon the name of Jesus. For the Lord to come and say. He I am. I am with you. This is not by chance. This doesn't happen because I'm a good person. Or because you are a good person. Or this is happen because I'm a believer. And you are a believer. It happens because. Even if you have little strength. This you do not take under account, but you have kept my word and have not denied my name. If you want Jesus Christ to put today a door open before you, an effective door and a big door full of the glory of God, full of the presence of God, full of the blessings of God, then take, make a decision assured and safe in your heart for you to keep the word of God and ever, never to deny the name of Jesus. It's not easy, but don't forget ever that what is impossible for man, it is possible for God. Whatever you ask for in my name, you shall receive. And I today want to ask from God, because we have petitions today. I want to ask from Christ to find grace by Him, to always keep His word, and never ever to deny His name, because I care about that open door, that effective door, which is by the Lord of all hosts, to be always open before me. So I will never find it closed, the door of the kingdom of heaven, but always to find it open, the door of the glory of God. Lord, give us all. If you agree, my brethren, say Amen. Give us all, my Lord, to keep your word and never deny your holy name. We confess that our strength is small and we cannot. We cannot promise this, but we can with faith ask it from you and with faith for us to receive it from you, the good God. Second promise of the later days. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say that they are Jews and are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet. And to know, and to know 
that I have loved you. And the question now is, Lord, I want to know, and I want you to confess that you have loved me, because then the results will be, all these people who are against you, and against your church, and your people, and they say they are Christians, they will come, and they will worship you, the living true God, and they will confess that you have loved me. What should I do, Lord, so I can obtain your love, so I can remain in your love, so you can be glorified, you, in your love in my life? And God cries out, when Jesus Christ decided to do all, all righteousness being baptized in the water by the hands of the man John the Baptist the Almighty God when he made the decision and said baptize me in the water because the time has come and John said who am I to baptize you I'm I'm in need to be baptized by you, not you by me. Then, my beloved brother, the voice from God was heard. This is my beloved Son, in which I am pleased in. My Son, he was always a Son, but beloved, he became right now, because he did all the righteousness of God. And I will always do the righteousness of God, to obtain the love of God, the love of Jesus Christ, the love of the Holy Spirit. And all the righteous of God is according to the word of God. Seek first the kingdom of heaven, rebirth, and the righteousness of God, which is the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Whoever are led by the Holy Spirit, these are truly sons of God. My God, please make me be led by your Holy Spirit. I cannot say that I can do this, but I can believe and say to you, Lord, Amen, brethren, all of us, Lord, please, please make us be led always by the Holy Spirit. Make us remain in your love. Make your love remain inside of us forever. Hallelujah. And then we will see all those in which we are prayed for, in which we love. For what is written to happen, and the Lord Christ added the believers to the church. But there's also something else which assures me being beloved by God. Behold my servant, my beloved servant, the word of God cries out. And let's find it together so we can read it. Because it's a very, very nice verse. It's the Gospel of Matthew. The Gospel of Matthew. We'll read together because it's very beautiful to obtain the love of God and to know how I should walk so I can obtain the love of God and the love of God to be upon me. The Gospel of Matthew therefore, chapter 12, chapter 12 and verse 18. 12, 18, the Gospel of Matthew. Let's read together. Behold, my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased, not my son, but my servant. And the servant has a trait. He has a Lord. He has a second trait. He hasn't got anything of his own. A third trait. That he works for his Lord. And a fourth trait. That he's always a servant. Hallelujah. Always a servant. And in the church of Christ, there are no leaders or chiefs. There are no great or small. There are no wealthy or poor. There are no wise and foolish, educated and non-educated, small or great, elderly which are useless, and young people which are useful in the church of Christ, my brethren. The foolishness of God is wiser than men. Hallelujah. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. The foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Hallelujah! But let's hear now, who is a servant? And let's all make a wish today. Lord, make us like that, please. Make us like that, Lord, so we can obtain your love. I will put my spirit upon him, and he will declare justice to the Gentiles. He will cry out, The Lord is coming, repent, believe in the gospel. He will cry out, Prepare to answer the Lord your God. 
He will not quarrel nor cry out. The servant of God doesn't fight, doesn't quarrel, but is full of love of Christ and the compassion of God. He will not quarrel nor cry out, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. And a bruised reed he will not break, and smoking flax he will not quench, till he sends forth justice to victory. A bruised reed he will not break. Have you seen, my beloved brethren, what beautiful images, how wise God is in the simplicity of parables? Have you gone through a river? Have you seen reeds? Some reeds are tall, strong, thick. And there's another reed which someone has kicked and has fallen, broken, useless. It will dry up and die because someone, either on purpose when he kicked it, or someone went by and by mistake broke it. And that's how people use other people. When they see someone weak, they kick him. And even by mistake, he despises him, gives him no importance. And the person then is lost, crushed dies but Jesus Christ the beloved of God the servant of God doesn't leave a reed broken he loves a reed he loves a sinner he loves him who is tired who's wounded he loves him who's afflicted who has failed he loves the weak the elderly man the sick man he is God of the weak, my beloved brethren. He is God of the poor. He is a God of all people because all people are weak and poor. We have nothing. Even if we have money, we still haven't got nothing. Even if we're healthy, we still haven't got nothing. Even if we're young, we still have nothing. Everything passes away. I mean, the Word of God remains. The one who will take care of you really, truly, is Jesus Christ, the beloved servant of God. And the smoking flax who would not quench. Once, there was no electricity. And they had little lamps. They used to put oil in them and a flax and they would light this and it shone but the oil went out and the flax trembled burnt out smoked and finished and man has strength inside of him that's what they say man has strength inside of him but we end up being a smoking flax no matter how strong he is he might be a great actor a great basketball player a great soccer player a great whatever but one day he'll have to meet death and there in death there'll be no one there to glorify him there'll be no one there to help him but everyone will say hurry up and die let's get over and done with it unfortunately my brethren that's how things are in that moment, only Christ will be there, close, in your moment of weakness. And if you call upon His name, the Lord will save you. Let me tell you a story. I've got appetite today for stories. Someone had come from America, a great scientist, a very good man. And I met him, and I talked to him about Christ. And he said, let me tell you something, George. I am God, and you are God. I understand, I said to him, since I can do everything, aren't I a God, George? And he said such other things in arrogance and pride, but he was a good man, full of compassion. He helped the poor. He gave to charity, but he was an unbeliever, an atheist. And I said to him, let me tell you something, my friend. A moment will come and you won't be able to do what you want to do. But remember that moment, that who you despise now, he wasn't a blasphemer, he just rejected Christ. He said that he was just a Jew, he used to call him, Christ forgive me. And I said to him, when your moment of weakness comes, remember, and I hope God puts this in your heart, so you can say, Christ, I repent, save me. And my beloved brethren, they rang me up from America and they said to him that he died. And I said, he died? He died. From what? I asked. He said, from a heart attack. I said, dear Lord, 
I said, please tell me to unite once. They said, no. How? I asked them. He had a heart attack at home. The ambulance came and took him. And on the way he cried out, Christ save me! Christ save me! He cried out. And when he reached the hospital, he died. But he was saved, my brethren. Hallelujah. Brethren, we must understand that we are weak people. We are unimportant. We are small. We have no strength at all. Christ informs us so we can be sure that without Him we can do nothing. Do you believe this? Why? Why should we ask for the name of Jesus at the last moment in our lives? Not ask for Him now and ask and call upon Him every day and enjoy this open door before us so we see the salvation of all men, so we see the glory of God, so we can live in blessings like trees planted by the rivers. Today is the right day. Today is the day of salvation. Today, if you hear the heart of the Holy Spirit, call upon the name of Jesus Christ and He will bless you. God is the truth. But there's something else also. Verse 10, we were reading the Revelation. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. This is the most serious of all. Because people cry out, the Antichrist is coming. But the Bible cries out, Christ is coming. And then the Antichrist will come. But I want Jesus Christ to rapture me, to receive me. Amen, brethren. I don't want you to be in sorrow for those who have fallen asleep, Christ, Christ calls out, for those who died in Christ. Because the day will come when the trumpet of God will be heard. A shout from heaven with the voice of an archangel, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are, are alive and remain shall be caught up together. But who? The people of God. We'll be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And I want to be in that day ready. And let's read this, my brethren. I told you today I've got a great appetite. Forgive me, therefore. Let's go to... I love Christ. That's why I've got a great appetite. The first letter of the Corinthians, chapter 15. Verse 51. 15, 51. First letter to the Corinthians. Let's all read this. And let's all be there in that day. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Who won't die? In that day, all those who are alive. The others will have died. I don't know if you will be alive in that day, but I know one thing the Lord is coming quickly. Verse 52, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. I await the resurrection of the dead, and a life in the future, eternal. Amen. This is the resurrection of the dead. This is the rapture of the church. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then at the same time, we who are alive and remain shall see this corruptible body put on in corruption. And this mortal body, which will die because no one is immortal, will put on immortality. And in one moment, twinkling of an eye, to meet the face in which we all love. Just think, my brethren, when we see Christ as He is, to see Jesus as He is, do want this, my brethren. Hallelujah. We don't live for no other day, but we only live for that day, to meet our Lord Jesus Christ. 
my beloved brethren, the heavens are open today. I tell you in the name of Jesus Christ, with all assurance, whoever calls upon the name of Jesus will be saved and will take part in the rapture of the church because Jesus Christ came to save all sinners, all people. And he doesn't show partiality. Whoever calls upon the name of Jesus Christ will be saved. Today, therefore, let's glorify him. He loved us with everlasting love. He drew us with mercy and he wants to have us forever with him. But let's do something else also. Let's rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus Christ to bind the evil spirits that resist. And let's preach eternal life. Let's preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's preach Jesus Christ and Him risen. All together with one voice. Through the Holy Spirit. And it continues. Verse 11. Behold, I'm coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. This is a commandment. First, we had promises, now commandment. Hold what you have. Have you got eternal life? Have you got Christ? Have you got the gospel? Do not let it go. Today, the word of God has been given to you. Don't let it go. Don't leave and say, I don't care about these things. Hold what you have. People are not giving it to you. What can man do to you? Man, can I say it, is an empty tin can. That's what we are, empty tin cans. But Jesus Christ is the Lord of all powers. It's not easy, it's a battle. It's a fight. It's war to keep the word of God in your heart, to keep the gospel of Jesus Christ in your heart. You're not alone, there's a spiritual world out there. The Holy Spirit strives to bring you to Christ, but the devil also strives to take you away from Christ. Whoever wins, whoever overcomes, we must overcome. Do not fear, Christ calls out. I have overcome, and you will overcome also. And this is the victory which overcame the world, your faith. We must win by faith in the name of Jesus Christ. And whoever overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. And I will write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches today. Amen.